Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. You may not know this, but one of the great things about the fractal noise effect is that it can be used to create seamlessly looping backgrounds. Not to start any big debates here about the universe, but the key is evolution. I'm not talking Darwin, I'm talking about two properties found in all fractal based effects in After Effects called evolution and cycle evolution. If you watched my tutorial on the very basics of fractal noise, you'll remember that you can get the fractals to animate by setting the keyframes for the property called evolution. As you can see, it works on a system of revolutions and degrees similar to rotation and produces some interesting changes in our fractal noise. However, this isn't enough to loop the animation. For that, we need to activate the feature called cycle evolution by clicking on this checkbox. What this does is tell After Effects to force the fractal noise effect to eventually return to the exact same look it had when the evolution property was set to zero revolutions and zero frames. But now the question is, at what point will that be? When exactly will the fractal animation return to its original state? Meaning, how many full revolutions do I have to make before I have a seamless loop? The answer is found right here in this property called Cycle in Revolutions. By setting this number, you're telling After Effects how many full revolutions the evolution must go through before it returns to its original look. So, with the default setting of 1, we end up with a loop after one full revolution. Now I'll come back to this in a moment, but before that, I want to talk about how to actually make this into a seamless loop. In this case, I'm trying to create a seamless loop lasting 4 seconds, so I'm working in a 4 second composition. At my first frame, I'll add an evolution keyframe with a default value of zero revolutions and zero degrees. But where do I add my second keyframe with a value of one full rotation? Now a common mistake that After Effects animators make is that they add the keyframe to the last frame in their composition. The problem with that is that the end result is that the first and last frames look exactly alike. In other words, when you loop, you will have one repeated frame. Now in a really long, slow animation, such as 30 seconds with only one revolution, you probably wouldn't notice the repeated frame. But in a short animation like this, where things are moving fast and fluidly, there will be just the ever slightest hit where it repeats that frame appearing to freeze, just for a moment. Most people won't see it, but some will. So to correct this issue, We'll have to move the keyframe down in time to one frame past the end of your composition. To do that, you can just grab hold of the keyframe and slide it down one frame. But if you want to be really precise, you can move to the last frame in your timeline and then use the page down button on your keyboard to move the time marker to one frame beyond the end of your composition. Then either cut and paste the keyframe or start to drag it and maybe hold down the shift key to snap it into place. And there you go a quick RAM preview and we now have a loop that does not have even the slightest hint of a repeated frame. You can render that out and hand it to your video editor or you can use a looping expression and time remapping to loop it in another composition. Jumping back a bit, you may be asking yourself why you would need more than one revolution for a loop. What's the point of changing the value for cycle in revolutions? Well think about it this way. Fractals have a lot of room to vary the way they look and feel as they animate. But when you cycle evolution, you're limiting the amount of variation the fractal noise can have. Remember, by cycling the evolution, we're telling the effect to eventually come back to where it started. But the end result of that is the fractal noise can't stray too far from its original look because it needs to animate and return to the original state, all while seeming natural and fluid. That means there's not a lot of variation in the overall animation. By setting the cycle in revolutions to a number greater than 1, you're allowing the effect to have more variation over the course of the animation. So if I set this to 2, I'm essentially allowing the fractal noise to vary about twice as much as it could before. But that means that I now have to set my last keyframe to two full revolutions if I want it to loop. The downside of doing this is that my fractal is now animating or evolving twice as fast as before because it now has to fit two full revolutions into the same four seconds that before only contained one. While variation is nice, you don't want to do this unless you either have twice as much time to work with and spread out your keyframes or if you're trying to create an evolution animation that moves at twice the speed as our original. So keep that in mind. So just to be clear, if you want a seamless loop, the last evolution keyframe must have a value that is equal to the number you have for cycle in revolutions or a multiple of that number. So if you have the cycle in revolutions set at 2, 
you'd need an evolution keyframe value of 2, 4, or 6, you know, and so on. Anyway, I hope this helps you in creating looping backgrounds and the like. Don't forget to visit us at the Creative Cow After Effects podcast forum, which you can find at creativecow.net. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.